Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Kelly. And um, this afternoon, unfortunately, there was a substitute who didn't really know how to use the technology. So we are going to be asynchronous, which means that um, there won't be a live lesson. So I'm going to do the lesson with you now um, so that you don't miss anything, okay? So today we are going to be reading in our textbook. We're going to be reading about the lost colony of Roanoke. Um, and that is in your textbook. It is on page 60. So if you open your textbook to page 60, or I will post this um, in Google Classroom as a um, material for you. And let me see if I can get my camera to move. There we go. Okay, so at the top of the page there, there's a painting, and this is kind of a famous painting because it depicts what the artist thinks happened at Roanoke, okay? And the caption of the picture says, the only clue about what happened to the settlers at Roanoke was the word Croatoan carved into a gatepost. And there they are pointing at the word Croatoan. I'm not sure if you can see that there. Um, and they're kind of gathered around looking at it kind of like, wait a minute, what is that? And there's some people over here that are kind of gathered looking um, and they all seem rather perplexed as to what might have happened here. So let's find out a little bit more about what is called the lost colony of Roanoke. Okay, so again, we are on page 60. If you have your textbook at home, you are welcome to open that and follow along. In the 1500s, Spain was one of the world's most powerful nations. Spanish ships ruled the ocean and brought gold and silver from Spain's colonies in the Americas. So remember where Spain was, Spain had land down in the southwest of what is now the United States, Mexico, okay? So they're now getting gold and silver and they're taking it back over to Europe. In England, Sir Walter Raleigh believed that colonies in North America could make his country richer and more powerful too. And he was from England. In 1584, he sent two ships to explore the coast of North America. And again, remember, they are looking for gold and riches and other things um, that they think are in North America in places that they really are not. The ships landed on an island near present day North Carolina. The sailors named the island Roanoke after the Native Americans who lived there, the Roanokes. So it was the Roanoke tribe. When they returned to England, they told Raleigh that the island had fish, animals, fruits and vegetables, and friendly people. The next year, Walter Raleigh sent a group of men to start a colony. Few of the settlers were farmers. Supplies ran short because they were unable to raise food. When fighting broke out between the English and the Roanokes, the settlers gave up and returned to England. So they were not prepared. They were not prepared to live over in a land they had never really seen before. They didn't really know the climate. They didn't know the soil and how to grow things here. So they were not successful. In 1587, Sir Walter Raleigh sent about 115 new settlers to Roanoke, including farmers and skilled workers. The settlers realized that the Roanokes would not give them food. So they sent Captain John White back to England for supplies. Unfortunately, England was fighting a war with Spain and White's ships could not leave England again. So John White goes back to England thinking, oh, I'll just go and load up with some supplies and I'll come back and everything will be fine. Well, England was at war with Spain, so he kind of got caught up over there, and unfortunately, he was not able to return to Roanoke with the supplies that he had promised. Three years later, right? Picture the little SpongeBob meme. Three years later, White finally returned to Roanoke, but when he got there, there were no signs of the settlers. Even their houses were gone. The letters Croatoan 
were carved on the gatepost of a ruined fort. So that's all that was left. White thought that the settlers had moved to the island of Croatoan, but before he could find out, the weather turned bad and he could not search the area. No one has ever discovered what happened to the colony. So when John White gets back, he's all excited. He's expecting this big welcome. He gets there, he looks around and it's like, vroom, 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 vroom. nobody's there. So he they, they explore and all they see are these letters carved into the gateposts of this fort. There's no houses. There's no evidence of the people that were there. So this is a very famous history mystery and we will be talking more about it, okay, next week. But I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look in our chapter six packet. And if you have your chapter six packet, um, you can take that out. If you don't have it, you can open up a Google Doc. I don't know why the camera does not switch over. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Let me see here. I can get the camera to switch over. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, you may not be able to see me, but you can hear me. Okay. So we're going to go through, this is on page two. Okay. And up here are some of the words that we just talked about in uh, section 6.2. So number one, in the 1500s, blank was one of the world's most powerful nations. So which one of these is actually could be two? Move this. It could actually be two, but for our purposes, we're going to say that it was England. Okay, England was one of the world's most powerful nations. They had accumulated a lot of land. They had claimed a lot of land um, and they were expanding their colonies. In England, Blank believed that colonies in North America could make his country richer and more powerful too. Who was that? That was Sir Walter Raleigh. And if you recognize, his last name, right, Raleigh, North Carolina, right? Raleigh, North Carolina was named after him. Number three, sailors landed on an island near present day North Carolina that they called blank. And they named it Roanoke after the Native American tribe that was indigenous to that area that that came from that area they called it roanoke because that was the name of the native americans there number four a colony was started on the island but when food was scarce and fighting broke out the settlers gave up and returned to england so they gave up they went home took their took their ships and went home more settlers were sent, including farmers and skilled workers. They said cat sent Captain Blank back to England for more supplies. But due to war with Spain, his ships got stuck in England. Who was that? John White. Let me move this up. So Captain John White, remember he arrived. They kind of didn't really have enough to set up a successful colony. So he says, I'll go back and get some more. And back he goes. When he finally returned to the island, there was no sign of the settlers, except for the word blank carved into a gatepost. Croatoan is that mysterious word. And actually I'll write it the way they did in all capital letters. And actually I have to go back up. Number one is Spain. Sorry about that guys. So let's take a look here. In the 1500s, Spain was one of the most powerful nations. In England, Sir Walter Raleigh believed that colonies in North America could make his country richer and more powerful too. 
Sailors landed on an island near present-day North Carolina that they called Roanoke. A colony was started on the island, but when food was scarce and fighting broke out, the settlers gave up and returned to England. More settlers were sent, including farmers and skilled workers. They sent Captain John White back to England for more supplies, but due to war with Spain, his ships got stuck in England. When he finally returned to, in to the island, there was no sign of the settlers except for the word Croatoan carved into a gatepost. No one has ever discovered what happened to the people there. Now, I will say that since this book was published, since your textbook was published, we do think we know what happened to the settlers. There have been some discoveries and we will talk about them next week. Okay. All right, guys. So that is your assignment for today. Just to finish page two in your packet. Um, if you have extra time and you have that Eastern North Central States packet at home, you can continue to work on that because next uh, Friday you will have your quiz. Okay. All right, guys. I will see you Monday. Bye.